Hey, this is Brandon with Cairo Up. Today's blog is about the uh, cervical flexion rotation test. And this is a test that's a, a bit of a nuance compared to just normal cervical range of motion. We all do range of motion testing when it comes to different areas of the spine. However, this is a test that hopefully can isolate a specific part of the spine and help direct your care. So with the cervical flexion rotation test, First, we want to learn how to perform it. Our normal range of motion testing is going to be neutral spine. This is going to take advantage of the fact that the upper cervical spine, C1 and 2, account for 40 to 60% of that range of motion in rotation. The rest of the cervical spine makes up for those other ranges of motion, so we can lock those areas out by bringing the patient into full cervical flexion. And when she's there, now the range of motion that I get as far as rotation are going to be purely C1 and C2. When I do this, I actually have a table that brings me up a little bit higher and I'll actually use my chest to support her head into flexion. So for right here, I'm gonna bring her head up into full flexion and I'm just gonna slowly and passively go into full rotation side to side. Now, normal range of motion is about 44 degrees and she is right in that area, right around 45 degrees. That's me looking at her range of motion. We could, of course, use something like an inclinometer or goniometer to make a, a precise measurement uh, if it would be necessary. The interesting thing about this is a positive test will be one, range of motion loss. So any kind of discrepancy, 10 degrees or more, would be a positive test. The patient's not getting that range of motion. And number two, pain. So when we isolate that joint, we find pain or loss of range of motion. What that tells me as a doctor is I have a problem here. So what could be limiting that range of motion? It could be those suboccipital muscles that would respond well to manual therapy, stretching, rehabilitation exercises, but we could also have a joint problems back there which respond well to things like manipulation mobilization in fact we had a blog a couple months ago about snags and doing different kinds of mobilizations take a look at that blog a uh, great way to have a patient self mobilize at home here's the interesting thing apart about this test and as it relates to different conditions is that we can now actually isolate a specific segment and what we're finding is that when this test is positive things like TMJ uh, issues Things like migraine headaches and things like cervical joint headaches are very, very closely related to this joint just because of association with the different nerves and integrations into the spinal canal. So we can really take a closer look at where this problem arises. And one of the interesting things we brought up last year was association with vertigo. And here's the example that I use with my patients is that, you know, listen, Tara, uh, when you turn your head, your brain says, Tara, turn my head 45 degrees to the right. Unfortunately, what we're highlighting in this test is because of that joint restriction, your head only turns 35 degrees. Well, there's a sensory mismatch in there. Your brain and body think you're going a certain direction at a certain speed, and you can only go a certain direction at a certain rate of speed because of that joint restriction. So that's gonna cause a problem. It can cause things like uh, loss of the proprioception, dizziness, vertigo, or in this case, pain and loss of range of motion. So things that we want to consider. What can we do to help this problem? So this is a problem with a joint dis uh, uh, problem at uh, C1 and 2, the things that I use in my office, manipulation works very well. Uh, however, some people don't like manipulation this high in the cervical spine. So I do have something that I do with those patients to help in those kind of considerations. So what I'll have the patient do is I passively let her go into full range of motion. Now I know I'm in uh, full, um, uh, or, sorry, in neutral spine. However, I'll take her all the way to there and that's about as far as she wants to go. I'm not forcing her head down by any stretch of the imagination. I'm gonna have my hand right across her cheekbone and I'm not pushing down, I'm just resting my hand here and then I'm gonna say, Tara, can you slowly, gently rotate your head towards the right? So she's gonna go ahead with 10% of her force and she's rotating now, but I'm not gonna let her rotate. She's gonna hold for about seven seconds and then once she relaxes, go ahead and relax. And when she relaxes, I'll kind of hang out here for a second and then take her head to that new end range. And then again, rotate to the right and she's gonna hold for seven seconds and then relax, and I'm gonna slowly let her head rotate a little bit further. This is a nice, gentle mobilization to help achieve any kind of loss range of motion 
in that direction. So once again, manipulation is my go-to. However, if I can't get the person to relax enough or if they have any um, considerations that I'd want to do a mobilization, this is a great way to stretch that out. So in, uh, in review, uh, the centric I'm sorry, a cervical or a flexion rotation test is a great way to isolate the C12 joint. It's associated with a lot of important things that we see in our office like headaches, like migraines, like TMJ disorders, and also vertigo. And the ways that we're going to treat that are mobilization and manipulation works really well. It's a great objective measure to consider in your next evaluation on Monday.